Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Zanani and I'm joined today by my good friend, Jeff Blanchard, and welcome to this week's edition of Tech Down Over. And we are back and joining us in that center position of power today. It is Harold Muliati. How you doing, Harold? Me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Harold's I'm usually running again. the show, but when he's not, that means we have no guests and he's on the show. So we just throw him in there. Anyway, Harold does a, a, a great job of running the show and, and adding a lot of background stuff and everything else. All the backgrounds you see and all the shots, he put that all together. So he's done a, a great job with this. So anyway, well, it's been a week of not much new, right? I, mean, I haven't mm -hmm. seen anything new coming out. or I just hear everybody bitching about camera, bitching and bitching about this, bitch about that. It's uh, yeah, I was listening to, I can't remember who it was, but this week they were saying, you know, if you're going to look at the Canon EOS R, then you really should look at the Sony. And I'm thinking, why? You don't have to. Buy what you're happy with, whether it's this, which is the Canon EOS mm. R, or whether it's a Sony if you want one, or a Panasonic, or a Fuji. Or, and I go, what's with this pundit crap? You know, it's like, you must take, you have to, no, you don't. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Buy what you want and enjoy it because they're all good cameras nowadays. It's so just whatever you feel better with. I'm happy with Canons. I like the feel of the Canon. I like the feel and the yeah. weight in my hand. I don't mind the slightly bigger size. And I know that if I drop it, there's a good chance it won't break. Maybe the lens mm -hmm. might, but the camera won't. And it's got great color science. And no, that's not a new buzzword. This has been something Canon has had forever. Um, and I like the Sony one we had. I just wasn't crazy about it. Um, I know Harold likes his Canons. And, and Jeff, you still have Canon. We also yeah, like our yeah. Panasonics. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's our what we like. It's not what people tell us to like. I mean, what, what do you think, Harold? I think there's, you know, there's preference, and there's also the thing. I, I also kind of liked what I think Curtis and Tom Antos on on this show said, kind of similar things, where they were saying, you know, in the end, cameras are a tool, mm -hmm. and it's not so much whether this one is the best camera as, as you know this is a tool that's r fit for this certain thing and you know people have different needs camera wise um, yeah. people are doing different kinds of shooting a lot of times I see you know vloggers vloggers um, saying you know this is the best camera this is the absolute best you have to get this but it's a camera that's kind of s a little more specialized for vlogging kind of needs so that doesn't mean that people that aren't focused on vlogging are going to find that to be the best camera necessarily you know s someone who's more focused on stills might want slightly different features there are, there are people that just have certain features that they want for comfort or just because they're familiar with them like you know we, we like to t uh, we like to uh, bash on the little screen that they put on top of cameras that are kind of the dslr like thing mm -hmm. like like what they have on G the g9 but i guess for some people you know that makes them comfortable they like it so right <laughs> some people probably look for that feature and then you know uh, different features for the view for the viewfinder even if some people don't necessarily use viewfinders that much Others um, are very used to shooting with viewfinder and don't like to shoot with the screen. So then that, that changes sort of what you need to look for. But that's what is right with the, what you say, you know, with the cameras and what people need and that. Now, just take it back a step, though. Like, you can quite uh, see all the different features and that on cameras. Mm -hmm. But my father, you know, in his working life, he was a bricklayer. And what do you use? What's your main tool for a bricklayer? Is is a bricklayer's trowel, and and that's really not much. It's sort of like a pointy thing with a wooden handle on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of different ones to get, and he would go for different ones. No, you can't buy this, and they were made out of the same sort of metal. But yeah. as I said, and that's just one little thing like that, and there's so many choices. Look at the things we've got 
now with cameras with so many and what i usually do though and i would advise people a good way to to do it is if you watch camera conspiracies uh, reviews mm -hmm. it takes it takes a little bit of light-heartedness <laughs> out of uh, yeah. out of what it is because he had one this week on uh, about five reasons to buy the Canon 6D2 instead of the e EOS R. Interesting. And the number one reason was because you're a failure and you don't have enough money to buy. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, you know, <laughs> he had just little things like, you know, the, ES the ESOR is heavier when you're using the adapter than yeah. that thing. And he said, uh, the, the autofocus is not the same as the EOS R. He said they seem to have lost one of the pixels in the EOS R. So it's good because it's quite dual pixel, but he said they've lost lost one of the pixels in that. He <laughs> did say, like at the end of it, he said, but really, he says, I don't give a. He didn't say toss it, but he said, I, I, I don't give two hoots of what camera you buy. It's just a clickbait title, so at least you can, yep. you can watch it. <laughs> It's all, all in good fun. So. That's funny. But, uh, that's the sort of thing, you know, uh, I just like these really, yeah, you're a failure and you don't have enough money for the Canon, so you know, well, for the ESO. Well, you know, it, it's interesting. Max Yuriev, I think it was last week, did a review of four different full full frame cameras for video. For video. So, mm. And he really panned the EOS R. And I'm watching going, you're full of it. Sorry, you're wrong. That's wrong. What you're saying is not right. He was saying it's it's really blurry and soft. It is if you don't know how to do your settings. Because to get your video clear, I mean clearer, really pretty sharp, you have to adjust your sharpness settings. Out of the box, this comes at zero sharpness. It is soft. It's a typical Canon soft. But if you adjust it to like four or seven, which is the highest value, it looks damn good. Uh, at four, it looks very good. At seven, it's really sharp, and it doesn't seem to mess with the skin tones. But I was going, no, that's wrong what he's saying. He didn't change the settings. Not every camera out of the box is going to be perfect. Mm. You've got to tweak some of them. And then once you tweak it, then you have what you want, the kind of video you want. And again, it also depends on the situation. Do you want it to always be sharp, sharp? Do you want it a little bit softer? Canon always has been a little softer. That's just the nature of what Canon's like. But the thing is to say that, well, no, it's just not good because, no, you're wrong. I, I think that was totally off on what he did and not because I own it. I, I just know that that's no. what you do with Canons. You have to sharpen them many times to get a better video image. Um, if you remember on that 5DSR video we shot of Giovanni at mm -hmm. the restaurant, Everybody complimented us on how sharp Giovanni looked. Mm -hmm. And that, there was no adjustment on that one. It was just the way it came. So it really depends on the camera and it depends on the settings. But before you shoot with a camera, if you really haven't played with it, you really can't do a good review based on lack of knowledge of settings. So that just, you know, it's not, no, I'm not beating up on Max, but that's typical of a lot of reviewers. They go through it real quickly, but they don't know the cameras inside out. And they haven't really <laughs> practiced that much, and you know, you get what you get. It was funny. It was also with Case was saying about, uh, you know, when matching up the two, the six D, uh, D two, and the EOS R, and he said, well, if you look at it now, according to everything else, that the GH five S is a better autofocus than the Canon. <laughs> and he said, but how can that be? <laughs> he said, he said, but. It, it, Whatever you do, there's always it comes and goes, doesn't it? But mm -hmm. yeah, me, like, actually, like if you want to see a good review, a real a real hands-on review, um, Fronos, Fronos Photo, um, yeah. he did one on the EOS R, and he loved it. Mm -hmm. He actually thought it was a great camera. Yes, it's not perfect; no camera is. But he gave it a very honest review of the features, functionality. He took it out, did some some live shooting. And and he's he actually does pretty good reviews. Um, uh, yeah, because he does that. He doesn't just talk about. He takes them out. He takes them to the football field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matt, what he doesn't like and takes pictures and shows what yeah. it is. It's not 
you know, it's really hands-on. It really does get do the extra mile. So yep. it, it does a good job for that. So, so I say, if you're going to look at reviews, you know, you've got Tony Northrop. He tends to do very good reviews. Um, mm -hmm. You've got um, uh, what's his first name, Jared? Jared Poland. Jared yeah. Poland. Yeah, Frono's photo. <laughs> dot com <laughs> whatever he does with the little hand thingy um <clears throat> we should do that jeff we need to come up with a little you know <laughs> welcome to <laughs> d d o <laughs> <laughs> and i think that another thing um uh, that people i mean people do talk about it but sl slightly less than i than i think it actually merits um one of the big reasons I think that we keep going back to you know Canon and Panasonic is actually the um, ergonomics and yeah. you know it's not it's not this sort of you know people are very focused on kind of the end result the pictures the specifications the you know all of the all of the numbers that you'll you'll get but ergonomics are a really major thing and it actually kind of goes back to um, you know uh, Jeff was talking about his father the bricklayer and the trowel and. With simpler tools, you know, people accept that more that the ergonomics are, you know, one of the primary mm -hmm. deciding factors is what in which one you get. Like, it, it reminds me of um, kitchen knives because you know I, I have a few knives, but the thing with kitchen knives is people talk a lot about you know grades of steel or you know how well it'll hold an edge and the shape of the blade and stuff. But in the end, really, usually the 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 main deciding factor, the thing that's really gonna, you know, decide whether you wanna keep using this knife or not, is how it feels in your hand and the mm -hmm. the um, distribution of weight, because those are the things that that'll actually, you know, make you tired from using it too long and 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 all of that. You know, the rest you can sharpen it how you want, but what you know, when you're using something for hours, then just how it's going to um, sit in your hand and how it's going to um, how it's going to feel is paramount in deciding you know h how good you're going to feel after you you're using it for a whole day well, or and, like you said, and like i said with canons as well that they tend to they tend to have more buttons mm. that rather than electronics yeah. this new one they've got that slide bar but still they have more buttons which means it's you don't have to be looking at a screen to do it whereas a lot of the other ones tend to do a more electronic which Mm -hmm. No, so, no, you know. you've got a point, Jeff, but I'll tell you one thing on the EOS R that I think they really did blow is, you know, the multifunction bar is cute. I'd rather have mm -hmm. a, a, a dial. Yeah, it's a, dial a whole lot there. faster. It's just faster. I mean, uh, just and, and, you know, the dial, the dial would be great if it responded every single time mm -hmm. you touched it. It does not. It responds occasionally when you touch it i mean the thing i keep thinking is it's not necessarily bad but i don't i still don't understand why they couldn't have had both there's space for it on the back of the camera there is it, and get rid of the stupid dial up here do you, you really need to look here when it's on the back of your display or in your viewfinder what mode you're in why do you need a mode little thing right there which is hard to read anyway yeah it's dumb i mean these are these are stupid things where i think it's form before function rather than really function it's form before function it's like you buy a nice house and half the things don't work but they look good okay that's useless um i don't know you know it's like you were saying jeff i mean ca cameras are like dogs or they're like beautiful women maybe um you don't always like a brunette or redhead or blonde you don't always want a shepherd or a retriever you want what you want and and that's what it is they're all good in their own way it's just that you have a preference yeah, and, you, and, and which, which, whichever way you lean, you'll you'll come up with the reason why you want that as well. Yeah, and that's it, true. And, it's, and that's where it's always a bit of a, a thing when people say, oh, you know, well, I don't get given anything from a company. I only buy mine and do that. Well, sometimes you think, well, it's, it's hard to say which one's better or not because if somebody's given the camera, Yes, they can pull it to pieces because they've got no investment in. If they own right, it, yeah. Well, they're going to well, be saying they've made such a silly decision, paying six grand on something, and I that, know. or, or but you just never know. And I think the thing is these days is everybody's out for views, yeah. And so they've all 
to say something, and I don't know if you've heard about the, there was a little bit of controversy this week, or I think it was this week with uh, uh, Northrop's channel. Uh, oh no! What happened? I want just a little bit of thing that we've got a few responses on one of the videos. The main name the 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 video was why I quit. Oh yes, uh -huh. <laughs> but you know, Clickbait. but that yeah, was also you. clickbait. Yeah, it, it, and it was funny because she started Chelsea started out the show and she goes, "I quit, I quit, I'm done, I quit." And then you know you proceeded to listen and she goes, "Haven't we all thought like that sometimes? Don't we sometimes get tired of it all?" Yeah. And it was a good show, actually. It wasn't bad. So what, people got ticked off at that? Oh, oh I, it's beneath you two to do this just to get views. And I thought, oh, but they, they, you know, But they didn't do anything. All they said no. was they had a title that made you interested. And then when you listen to it, it was very valid. What do you do when you're burned out? What do you do when you're tired of something? How do you stay in it? And she even said, I'd never want to quit. However, sometimes you just feel like it. And so we talked about it because it was an important topic. And, and uh, it's funny because um, uh, Morganti, uh, what's his first name? Da, 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 da. He does, Anthony Morganti, he does a lot of podcasts too on different uh, uh, photo tools and training, Luminar, Photoshop, Lightroom. And he talked mm -hmm. about, we had one on, on the joy of photography, and he said, what happens when you're burned out? You're tired, you quit. Same thing, he talked about that. But it was a very valid conversation because no matter what you do and what subject, and what, if you're a doctor, sometimes you just get tired of sick people. Why are they always sick when they see me? You know, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, just one jerks. of those. It's one of those, why can't I see healthy people? Um, and but that's so true people get fed up with the same old same old people want change and there's nothing wrong with what they did i thought it was cute and and it really brought a point home that a lot of people go through i think jeff harold we've all at one point said why do we even bother well yeah i i think the thing is that you know people are getting kind of losing sight of the difference between a good hook and <coughs> disingenuous cl that's clickbait right, right. <laughs> and sometimes it is kind of uh Sometimes there, are th it is a little bit vague what separate separates them, but I. Yeah, but I mean the thing is with the thing like the Northrops, it, no matter if you know, if it say that if the call it clickbait, like you said in the first twenty seconds you knew what it was about, but you need those sort of things because you've got so much content out of, out there, you want something to bring it to your attention. You might yeah. like oh this oh what are they saying there, whereas if it just said. Uh, you know, five reasons to keep going or something like that. You might think, oh, yeah, whatever. Oh, I quit war. What's upset them? Or right. what, what story you really want to see what it's all about? And, like, I really enjoyed that show because it's, mm -hmm. it's good to see people like that are the, the, in the professional business who are doing a lot, doing all the right things. But even they, things that they do, all the right things, make no money out of it and, and get disjointed yeah. and disheartened. It and just give yeah. it and sometimes it's like just give it away let's start something else like we were saying about the stock photography mm -hmm. they're doing well all the change and they're making they yeah, get rid of the website and then do another one because yeah. it's uh, <laughs> just start all over again but it said just don't lose sight of it you just got to keep going and i suppose it's uh it's like well people say if you try things you keep going trying trying try you'll get there eventually but if you try twice and give up well, you're never going to get the email. No. Need to do it a hundred times to keep going. Yeah, and Tony came under Tony Northrup. He came under attack a couple of weeks ago, also because he gave an honest opinion about somebody. And man, did they ream him one! Mm -hmm. And and he goes, you know, I do this. I'm not charging you for this. These are my opinions. You mm -hmm. don't have to watch me. You don't have to agree with me. And you and you don't have to be so uncivil. And he's right because no. people are absolute jerks on on youtube uh, i don't know if they think they're anonymous so they can get away with it or they're just idiots i mean i've been to some some photo stores where you you know you talk to like the canon guys or the sony guys and the guys behind the counter are complete idiots they're arrogant this they're they're full of themselves and my comment is you know what i'm buying a camera that you can't afford so where are you getting the attitude from and then they shut up. It's like, and I've said that to a couple of them. I said, you know, what is your problem? 
you know, you want to act arrogant. I don't give a damn. <laughs> you're working here at the store. I'm making money. What? Uh, you're having an attitude. You have no right to have an attitude. Enjoy what you do. Be good at it, and help people uh, out. Don't don't be an arrogant son of a bitch. Nobody cares. Um, did you uh, Did uh, you ever see that? That's absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. The English comedy show. They <laughs> jumped on a plane. And they decided to go to Beverly Hills to do mm. some shopping, mm -hmm. and they got. Some Dude, and she, and the, the, she turned like, "Get over it, love you. You work in a shop." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, yeah. 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 Well, how many you times have you gone to like a, a real fancy restaurant? And <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of fancy restaurants because they tend I mean, to be yeah. pretentious. And <laughs> and we've had waiters who were so so darn pretentious, and you just look at them and go you go to in and out to get your burgers and that's it and we're eating an expensive meal and you're treating us like we're total idiots it's like first of all just be a nice person you don't have to be anything but what you are but they have these whole attitudes I and mean, i find it a lot in photography not so much in video mm. but man have i met a lot of arrogant photographers and you just go yeah what what is it with the photography stuff harold you know <laughs> Oh, well, I, I was just saying, agreeing with the general thing where I, I do think that that turns out maybe a little more in ph photography. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I think part of it is that maybe there are, I, I don't know if this is necessarily true, but I think there are more hobbyist photographers than yeah. just hobbyists. Yeah. Like a lot of the video people are actually, you know, they, they're kind of actively doing it more right. as a professional thing. I, maybe it's not necessarily that there's you know more photographers um, compared to videographers that are more um, hobbyists, but I, I just think maybe that's the that the communities for them are slightly more skewed that well, I way. I remember at one time Jeff came out to L.A. and he went to uh, I won't name the place, but he went to a photo store and he got totally ignored and he left. He was rather ticked off, and I went. Wow, they treat people nicely. What he got the wrong person, wrong day, or something, and and that's the thing. You should never be that way. And you've had the same problems in in Melbourne with some people that they're not very service oriented. Yeah, and the one that did did look after me, I spent five and a half thousand dollars with him. Yeah. So, so what is he, he now? Who won he on that one? Right? <laughs> he, who was the winner? The guy who took care of you. Yeah, you know, like they don't get saying, it. Yeah. The thing is, in photography, there's uh, there's so many things that. There's no right or wrong in a lot of things. Like people, you can say, okay, you hold the camera steady on the mm -hmm. video and have a nice little shot. But now there's feature films that have the camera moving all over the place, jerky yeah, up and down. I know. That's I considered know. a look now. And then they say, That's well, there's no image stabilization on that camera. <laughs> but there's a stick in somebody's nose, whereas yeah. before, now you, <laughs> now you shoot it from underneath so yeah. you can see the hair. Do you, like do, you re do you remember uh, Blazing Saddles, the movie from Mel yes, Brooks? Do, yeah. uh, he goes, look at me. I shoot. My hands are steady as could be, but I shoot yes. with this one. That was Gene Wilder where he says, Gene Wilder, <laughs> yeah. His shotgun and then he just holds his hands like this and then yeah. he doesn't he shot five people. <laughs> 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 It was great, but but it's I think it's it's a, go ahead. I was going to say it's a pity Mel Brooks uh, never did you know around in these days to do modern ones on like they do these scary movie uh, mm. parodies and that, but this would be good. He'd do a really good one, I think. He would. He's They're funny, and he'd be funny. <laughs> he he did a pretty good one with high anxiety with the birds. Yes. Yeah the birds but it, what you've got to know with that one it's an alfred hitchcock take off yes. isn't it so you've yes. got to really know, know on that one there as yeah well, it was so. great and if you've ever seen the movie the birds it's pretty well done i think um what's his name rod um he's the British. he's the British oh, no, guy. Uh, rod taylor rod taylor yeah. he's australian actually um he is yeah rod taylor was i think the main star in that one tippy hedron mm -hmm. i think and uh you know they're being attacked by a bunch of i guess it was a crows or something the yeah. birds um everywhere they're being attacked and so uh, high anxiety with mel brooks he took that as a being hit by bird poop 
So, so the whole place like, boom, 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 boom. but and the last scene you see him running completely white into a uh, uh, a, a dry cleaning place. It was actually pretty funny, but uh, that was then. Today that would probably offend somebody, but who knows who. Um, oh, well, <laughs> whatever. And that's getting back to say with Tony upset people. That, but the great thing is, uh, with peop Tony and Chelsea, but getting people upset at them. It's, well, it's like they always used to say, at least people are watching them to know yeah. that they don't like that they get upset with. If they weren't doing anything, like, hey, if we'll say something, nobody will complain about no. us because not that many people look at it. So. Well, look at, look at Ken a, Wheeler. Ken Wheeler has yeah. like 10 million views or something like that. He's got <laughs> tons of people following him only because they hate him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we hate him. We're going to see what he says today. And, and they're right. just. You know, and he had some really good shows. Yesterday he was screaming at something about Apple, and it was funny. I, mean, I, just, I always imagine that, you know, Ken's got a lot of people who um, really hate him, and then, you know, they're just talking to people, and they just unprompted bring up Ken Wheeler and talk about how, talk about how much yeah. they hate him, and then <laughs> yeah, and people are just like, who? It's just hilarious, <laughs> but... What people uh, don't like about Ken is because he's so knowledgeable, and people mm -hmm. don't seem to like that when somebody can go on about things, but he knows all the facts, and, and he's yeah. quite interesting to listen to, as I said, even if you don't not interested in the subject, just to think, what's going on in his mind? All that information that he's got on there, it's just, it's just incredible. But yeah. I think that's what people like to watch. They all, uh, you do like to uh, watch somebody who knows the subject they're talking about yep. and is passionate about it, whether they like it or not. So. Yeah, and then half the information is in Greek. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> um, you know, uh, one of now you should change his name to Tony or Nick. They'd be perfect. <laughs> it's Tony Wheeler, Nick Wheeler. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting, but he does come out with some good stuff. And and think about it: the Department of Energy, Department of Energy, asked him to come and talk on electromagnetism and energy, mm. and he was one of the most popular speakers. And he couldn't even believe it. He goes, they treated me nicely. And they were, and one guy gave him a BMW afterwards. <laughs> Just right. give, gifted him one. I, I like the story that uh, he, he told about that talk where, you know, there was one guy heckling him. Yeah. And, you know, he was thinking, ah, oh, you know, maybe I'm <laughs> really, uh, you know, maybe I'm really um, doing a bad job of it. But then, you know, afterwards he asked other people and they said, ah, oh, that guy just, does that to everyone yep <laughs> just the one guy that's always the one guy the grump uh, i don't like that <laughs> yep. when sadler, is it when sadler is it that the sadler Muppets? yeah yeah <laughs> that was in the top of the two old guards were oh, yeah, nothing but rubbish they always <laughs> yeah. were there <laughs> uh, that's what what the rubbish everybody but as i yeah. said if you can get there and talk about things that you don't need a script you just have your point and you just go on for it and that that's what yeah. i really think but yeah, that's experts. what he did. Oh, by the way, we did we, bring some. We did bring some photos today. Do you have those queued up? Yeah, let's. Uh, these let's are these are photos we took. I, I took most of these with the EOS R. Don't judge the photo. It just they were just shots. Trying to just test to get familiar with it. But these are all different times, different lenses. Uh, I'm using the Canon adapter. I don't have any native EOS uh, R lenses because frankly, I didn't need any at this point. Um, so it's a combination of the 35 millimeter L lens, the um, the I think it's 24 to 105 EF lens, uh, the Sigma 50 millimeter, which just runs beautifully on this. I think I have a Sigma 100 millimeter, no, a Tamron 100 millimeter, which also looks great. I mean, the the pictures come out whether it's low light, and we're not talking no light. We're talking lower light. They come out well. So They're not bad. That picture there that you've got on there. So what's going on with that? What's the dark things in the side? What's going on with that? Well, the dark things yeah. the house, right? Or well, you no. had some of these shots here where you were taking pictures of the sky, but you were kind of darkening out the sky somehow. Oh, what yeah, I was doing is I was using a. I think I was using a polarizer, not polarizer, right. uh, a neutral density to kind of play with the sky color a little bit. Okay. Because I thought, because that looks quite strange. I wondered because I thought you can't had to sort of make it do that. So I thought there must be some this. Some but other actually, on that shot, can you go, can you go backwards or yeah? I oh, don't. That one. That 
Was it this one? I didn't do anything to this one. That was what mm. it looked like. Are you sure? It looks like you've got something on there because it's it's definitely there's definitely like oh. a gradation of dark towards the middle. That's yeah, not in I, the other I'm ones. not sure. Maybe, but I don't recall this one being anything because I don't think I took the polarizer late. Uh, I think this is what it was late that night. It could have been. Oh, this one's this one's daytime though. This one's that's early. a daytime one. Okay, then so maybe th it was the polarizer, the neutral density. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this one too. Yes. Yeah, that that's what. Yeah, yeah it's the same shot. It's probably probably playing with the neutral density then. Yeah, because that's one got it on the side. It might yep. be turned right <laughs> the wrong side or whatever. I've been also looking this week at uh, what was it? Doug Jensen's videos that we've got him coming up shortly yes. on on, mm -hmm. on the he show. He does some really good training videos. And I've been looking at some of the things, but you know, it's amazing how when you do get looking at some videos, oh, I love that, you know, that, that Sony Z280 camera. Yep. Yeah, brand. <laughs> so I thought, oh, no wonder it's... I looked at it, I thought, no wonder it does some good shots. Mm -hmm. that. So, but this one's good, yeah. So. Could take some shots this time next year. Hopefully, the garden's been the, the grass has come back. Yeah, slowly but surely, we're starting to replant it because it died with mm. the with the drought we had. We weren't allowed to yeah. to water anything, and it's just the air has been super dry. Here. Oh my gosh, Jeff, yeah. we've been two to six, seven percent humidity for the last oh. five days. Oh, gee, that is dry, yeah. isn't it? Your lips, your lips, your eyes, it's just everything. Your throat's constantly <clears throat> trying to get it cleared. There's no theres no humidity at all in our air. Not fun. And then, of course, we're in air conditioning indoors, so it just kills you. Now, fortunately, today we're at 43%, so that's a little more tolerable. What I find difficult with most cameras on autos is the sky quite often darkens everything else down yes. a little bit. Yep. Well, not so bad, when, but it's when it's overcast more mm -hmm. so. But if, if it's nice, it, it does. It's okay. But like I took the camera out the other week, and when it was just overcast, it's really horrible to hard to to do it easily. Anyway, I'm threatening to. I keep thinking I'm going to take the Panasonic out tonight and take it to the city at night and do some night filming. Well, that'll be nice. I, I keep saying I'm going to, but it's now with the you know, summertime, it, you have to get in the city at about nine o'clock because it doesn't get tacked. Oh, right, then, so. right. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because you'll find that the GH5 at night with lights is really not a slouch. It takes really nice pictures. Mm. You know, I always hear people, well, it's not a good low light camera. Okay, no mm. light, maybe, but low light, it does okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're taking shots of a, of, a, of a building landscape with all the lights and the, you know, it looks great. It looks really good. We took some shots in Vegas with it. It looked really, really good. Even in darker scenes, like we're on a tram or a subway, they look good. So, you know, people just complain about everything. But frankly, how many people really take something in no light? No light. Well, that's the, well, if, and if you do, I've got the old, uh, this one here, the XA10, that's got the infrared. What? Not the, the, oh, right. The, yeah. The infrared that will shoot in total darkness. So you can see like little black and white. That's yeah. perfect. So why don't you do get something like that? But I'll tell you, this one, I've been using this now since I've had the new puppy. It's been my main camera. So I've been filming mm. a bit of her every day with that. And I thought because now, and it's easy to hold and take yep. and do it down, and you don't, you have to quick flip it out switch it yep. on and away you go so it's been mm -hmm. getting a, a, and you know what is that it's about mm, seven eight years old already this the xa10 well well it had well as i said when was the last time i've been it was four years ago and i've probably but so i've <laughs> had it probably two or three years before then for, yeah so it probably nearly seven years now seven, and it's still now. a good camera and by the way they well, still uh, people are buying it yeah. to this day and, yeah and it still is people can still buy it so i thought and it just so, and if you don't want it that big, you can always take the XLR handle off. But even yes. if you don't use that, it's, it's much better to hold like that. Yeah, so when you take it off, you, you have a Vixia. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it is, isn't it? So yeah. On that we started out the day. show. We started out the show with one Vixia. It was about a nine hundred dollar Vixia from Canon, and it was their professional Vixia, I guess. Mm. And then we went to the XA10 for about two, three years. Then we went to the XA. Uh, 25 and then we're, went to the 35 now we're using the xf 
uh, 405 Four on it. Yeah. And, you know, they've all been really good. Um, what made me look strange, though, with this XA10, it had a, what was it, a 40 gigabyte hard drive in it. Mm. It's the yeah. Also had dual memory card slots. Yep. yep. Which every screaming about, but back then, nobody cared. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. I'm not, I might have never put a memory card in it. I just used a 40 gigabyte internal hard drive. But I thought, hey, hang on, everybody's kicking up about that. That's got yeah. cool SD card slots. <laughs> now, you know, the only thing that's different, this is pretty amazing when you think about it, that one shot 25 megabits per second and 50 megabits mm -hmm. per second at the high end. 50 was the high. Yeah. And now you've got the Panasonic, for example, which can shoot 480 megabits per second, I think. It's mm. either 400 or 480, I can't remember. Uh, I mean, think about the difference in, in just five years, uh, how much higher they've gotten. And you've got some I'm detail that's incredible. I'm, I'm still just blown away at how good a quality, just in HD, how good a quality that, that just yeah. does. So yep. It's a very just solid uh, camcorder. The only problem I find about it is it only shoots in AV, AVC, AVC, HD, rather than MP4, because then you have to ingest it into something to put mm -hmm. into a normal use, whereas the right. others just store them in an MP4, so you can just dump them as files as they are into yep. something else. GH5 does that. But uh, yep. I mean, hey, I've, I'll just put up with that. And it's still, as I said, the battery on that, I still get three or four hours out of that. It charges up and it's, it's so reliable. You can leave it on the camera for a week and it's still okay. I know, it's amazing. At the time. But some of the things, the advanced cameras a lot, but then some of the old ones are think, gee, that still does a lot better than some of the more, more Well, you also cameras. notice that with the with these cameras, you never really thought about focus much. No. They just work. I never, never even thought about it until recent times. Oh, yeah. hang on, I'll just use point it. I never thought about it because it has a follow focus. You can follow the person in the scene, but you just, just seem to point it. And video cameras tend to do that word the DSLRs and that you usually have to work a little bit harder with focus right I think part of that is you know nowadays you have 4k so people of course will you know take the video and then they'll pixel peep they'll they'll go and you know zoom in way way far and then they'll just check you know oh, th this pixel looks blurry th this group of pixels looks blurry and have you noticed you know, I mean, notice what the, the, the common thing is to do now is like, it's to film, uh, film me like this there and when I'm talking and all of a sudden cut to me six inches closer. Oh, and yeah. Put it back. Yeah. <clears throat> out, in, out, in, out, in, out, just because yep. I can. To pretend it's like a different camera. Now, there's, just <laughs> there's one shot I absolutely hate. And that's when they have two cameras on a person, one here yeah. and the other one over there. And then you see the guy going, yeah, I think it's really important when you when you kind of go over to and you just go, that's a stupid shot. He's talking to no one or he's looking yeah. straight the other way and you go, what good is that shot? I don't well, get I it. And they all use it. And it's just like, and then they're back in front and then they yeah, go this way was, and then they zoom into the face and you just go. Ah, because that know. was a whole point of having when they did a separate camera so if you did it and then you know you're cutting it you look at that camera yeah but like this you have that camera and you can see them shooting off but that seems to be purposely I don't get done it. that it's a stupid wrong. i think what it is is people's attention are so short is so short mm -hmm. that they have to do a shot change just to wake them up it's like oh uh uh, uh. Uh, it's like <laughs> you see these motion pictures though a lot of the, these blockbusters mm. they show you a 30 set 30, 30 second trailer mm -hmm. and in that 30 second trailer they show you the whole film yeah or every single yeah. action scene in it then mm -hmm. you go and see the film and think well there wasn't much else about it <laughs> 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 it's it's all, it was all in those 30 seconds that's it <laughs> 30 seconds and you think Oh goodness! We have to sit through the rack to get to those. those uh, hey, we were talking about pictures that. yesterday yeah. with with or moving uh, motion pictures with Sarah. And <clears throat> have you ever seen the movie The Lake House uh, with Sandra Bullock, and, Sandra Bullock, and Keanu Reeves? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. It was based on an old South Korean movie that came out, I think, in two thousand two. Mm -hmm. 
it's a lovely movie. It's a, it's a story about time travel, if you will, mm -hmm. and how two people, she is renting, I think she's a doctor and he's an architect, and she's renting this house, this lake house from him, but they're not in the same time zones or years. or so. mm -hmm. It's really kind of interesting. Uh, really lovely movie and well done and, and kind of touches the subject of time well. It was cute. Um, and then, of course, the old classic with Christopher Reeve. He's been the talk recently because they re-released the uh, 4K Blu-ray version of Superman, oh. the series. Okay. For 19 bucks, I think you get three or four of them, which is cheap. And um, they were talking about Christopher Reeves, and he did a great movie called Somewhere in Time. Do you remember that uh -oh. one? Great one, yeah. I'll Such really a lovely movie. Um, yeah. it, it's a great one. And with... Um, Jane Seymour and him. It's all about, again, time travel and a love story. But both mm -hmm. of those are great examples of movies that you don't have to have stupid camera angles. You don't have to have idiotic mm -hmm. movements and jarring everything. Just good story. Just yeah, good well, story uh, and, and a little adventure in it. I was just talking to somebody the other day, and it was one that was Rex Harrison and mm. uh, oh, I forget the lady's name, and it was The Ghost and Mrs. Mule. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the, the, What's her name? Was that Hope? It wasn't Hope Lang. No, it wasn't Hope Lang. She did the show. She did the show. Um, Tierney. Tierney. What's Jean her name? Jean Tierney? Jean Tierney? Yeah, that's yep. her. Yeah. Okay. It was Jean Tierney. And I thought that whole thing was just shot with in a, a studio with just a, a few rooms. Yeah. And that was it. And it was a and cool movie. The whole, and it just said the whole, the whole thing to do through that, but I thought there was no big flashy things to do it. It all had to do with the stories, whereas yep. a lot of blockbusters these days, it's, yeah, it's got great visual effects mm -hmm. and that, but really the story goes for about three minutes. It's yeah. just well, actually, actually, I'll probably irritate people on this one. I never thought Star Wars was very good at story. It was mm -hmm. all effects, and the story was cute, but it was lame. And, mm -hmm. and then the prequels were even worse. They were almost stupid. And you just go... Okay, so as a director, he has no timing or talent, but and as a storyteller, eh, it could be, could have been so much better. Um, but but yeah, that's my it, opinion, it, and and of course that's my opinion and no one else's. But and it, it's getting back to the thing about clickbait. It's the same thing with the Star Wars things. Like I, I buckled and got the the last Star Wars one. It was cheap at the video shop or mm -hmm. the DVD, so I thought I'll buy it because I hadn't watched it. It's been December since it, it, it came out. Yeah, how was, was it? Just, uh, yeah. I was just so embarrassed. I thought, but it's it it sells. That's what things. I thought right. it was so corny, and I thought, how can you do this? I thought I'm just over it. It's just so silly. But mm -hmm. I thought people buy it. Mean, you can't blame the directors because that's no. what people if they did what they want. Nobody buy it. Yeah, but uh, that's yeah. what's selling. They keep while well, people keep buying it. They'll, keep keep pushing them out but i thought in the, the original ones or original three it was good normal story but now oh. we'll just get ridiculous again an evil an evil lord that's you know looks like mm. a, a naughty adolescent with pimples <laughs> <laughs> got no respect like when the original darth vader you was frightened to death of him but this other one he said you're evil yeah really yeah just go back <laughs> oh that's funny hey do you watch <laughs> Do you watch Caleb DSLR Shooter? Yes, yes. yeah. Caleb's great. He did a really nice one this week. It was touching. It was him and his wife. And they oh, were talking yes. all about themselves, how they met. People were asking questions in the live chat room all about them. And I thought it was absolutely charming watching the two of them kind of share themselves with the audience and what they liked and what they don't like. And, you know, it made them very real, very human. And, and Caleb's a great guy. I've never met him, and we haven't had him on the show yet, though. He's scheduled to one day come on. He said he's just been crazy busy right now. But he'd be wonderful. And it was such a charming, darling kind of episode of two people talking about themselves and how their relationship is and, and everything and how it works with what they do and how they work together. I thought it was just really cute. If you haven't seen that this week, I think it was a couple of days ago. It was. Yeah, uh, it was that's mm -hmm. right, because I'll have to look at it. I thought, oh, I'll have to watch that one because it was one of the latest ones. I hadn't yeah. seen it. Uh, it's it's cute. I thought it was just charming. Um, it You know, it makes them come to life. You're not just a talking head on the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you guys think we just do this for because we have nothing better to do, and that's probably true. 
But <laughs> do you realize what it's like to be us out there? I mean, Harold can't leave the office without girls jumping on him. It, exactly. It's, yeah. it, it's it's hard. It's really hard. Jeff, not, Jeff, I, Jeff I, used to, to be a private person. No longer. He's got paparazzi yeah. all over trying yeah. to take his camera gear. You know, I'm the same way. It's just, it's awful. They attack my wife just to get information. It's really bad. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, so that's why I live in Australia because I just couldn't, I can't show my face in America because I just get mobbed too much. He's too well known. Yeah. That's, that's right. And he's in hiding. It's, it's in hiding. So, you know, if you think we do this as a service, we do because we put ourselves at great physical and mental risk just doing this every single week. What do you think? Yeah, that's, that, that's right. It's, Believe I that. Mean, do you really <laughs> do, you, do you realize how hard it is to come up with new topics on the same old stupid cameras every week? <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> but but we do it somehow for you. For you. It's all for you. Is it for them? I was just thinking I was just thinking the other day, I thought, you know, what about the days where you had to wait for a whole month for a magazine to come yeah. out to mm -hmm. have a look at something and then yeah sat in anticipation for the next month to see the update oh, of the yeah. computer and all that and i thought these days you just it's just so straight out one of my things about the new canon that you were saying rick one of the things i think it's not doing so well the only reason why i say because i went into the city the other day yeah and i actually see that in the shop I've never yet to see an A7 III in, in a shop yet. Interesting. Here. Unless that was see. unless it was the display model and they're not allowed to sell it. And again, Canon would, the thing is with Canon though, m m that's the other thing. They'd probably have production that would have tons more than the would do of the... Uh, well, no, but they have had problems delivering on these. They didn't, ex the sales have been really high. I was talking to mm. Lariat and he goes, they're still, still trying to fulfill all the pre-orders. Oh. Mine was a pre-order. He's got. They said we have, we don't have enough, um, and on the grip just came in as a special order. I got it. I, I think I got it Monday or Tuesday. Um, this was a special order, so it's been really tough getting gear for this. I don't think they even expected how quickly it would sell. You know, Canon Canon shooters like Canon for the most part, and mm. they'll buy Canon stuff. That's sort of like me. I kind of took a risk on this one, but on the other hand, I knew I'd probably like it, and I actually do. There's things I don't like, but oh well, that's every camera. Um, it's all something, isn't there? Yeah, it, it's it's the same old, same old. But it is it is interesting to see you know how how these things sell and what doesn't sell and and who likes it, who doesn't like it. But yeah, it's it's here we go. Well, anyway, we've, we've gone off over, of f over 45 minutes. Yeah, we've gone over a little bit again. So, uh, so if you're watching the show, please subscribe. We have a donate button, but nobody can see it because it's invisible. So you have to find it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have never asked a penny from anyone. So, but if you want to donate oh, well, money, we'll, we'll ask us and we'll let you donate somehow. Uh, there's uh, Casey. Just Casey said on this. We, we, uh, the last thing he said on his review about the 6D two and, and the ESOR, he said, I really don't give a toss about what you know which one you buy as long as you click on all my links so I make more money so I can buy the camera that I want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think ever since he's hung out with the rich billionaire guy or whatever, he seems much healthier, happier. He he's not so whiny well, he, anymore. Using the Sony A nine to film it. He's using the Sony I know he's using a Sony A nine, a forty two hundred dollar camera. Not bad for a kid from Canada. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> like we, we can only that. speculate here. That's all. <laughs> uh, I just like his honesty where he says, I don't care. As long as you click on that, I get lots of views that I can make right. more money so I can the camera I want. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I don't know. When we've had high clicks on some shows or some reviews, get a penny extra. So don't, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, all these guys who are killing themselves with advertising and this and that and that and that, they're just constantly selling their butts off. You know what? At the end of the day, if they make a thousand bucks a month, that's it. Get a job. You'll make a lot more money. And you have to work less at it. It's a lot of work just to hawk gear and make everybody irritated day in, day out, day in, day out. It's not, not as easy as that people think that they no. do have to work. And they to. work. Look at Max Urev. He was making 2000 a month with as you know, hundreds of thousands of views every mm -hmm. month. And they delisted him. They, they demonetized mm -hmm. him. And I'm thinking you're working that hard for two grand a month. 
Yeah, just yeah. take an extra yeah. wedding and you've got an, you've got more than enough to cover that. Why why kill yourself? So it's, it's, it's like in this industry though, it's got it's also you've got to be out there. So people say, Oh look, that's Max doing my wedding. Yeah. Whether he's doing that's the so they'll hire him. Whereas if you're not on there, they say, Well, you haven't got a podcast, you don't do anything. Right. Why should I hire you? So yep, that's, that's probably true. You've got to be out there whether you're making money on YouTube or not, but people have got to see your work out there. Anyway, how'd you like that, folks? That was a post-show after we said goodbye, yeah. all in the span yeah. of three minutes. That's right. So we're going to say goodbye again. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good one. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.